Hey everybody, today I am taking my Zenit with the Cosmos 300 and I really wanted to just kind of do a demonstration on how difficult is it to actually fly a trike. I think it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. I don't have like the best scenario here. Like this field has puddles all over it. I've laid out my glider on the sidewalk because that was the driest area. Also, there's sprinklers at the other end of this field right here that are just like shooting water really high up and I have to get off the ground before that. Can I do it with this setup? And how hard will the takeoff be? The wind is totally variable right now. Just a moment ago, it was a tailwind coming that way. So that would make for a longer takeoff. And now it's kind of coming a crosswind off of the mountains. I don't care that I have a little bit of a tailwind because this trike is so powerful, I'll be off the ground regardless. Just so long as I'm up before I'm, I'm like sprayed, blasted by those water cannons over there. I'm clipped into the solo hang points. If I had a passenger, I'd be clipping into these guys right here. But I'm not, it's just me today. I have a, a tandem flight tomorrow, so I just want to make sure everything is, is A-OK -okay with the trike. Just going to do one more walk around with the glider got this tree it's just barely going to miss it right here everything looks good so if one of the sides is tightening first you want the lines to get taut at the same time so i'm just going to drag this big boy this way until they're both kind of getting taut at the same time right there and i'm happy with that i think i'm ready to rock and roll here's the steps i take after buckling in i am going to secure the throttle on my right hand and then i am going to get the brakes now the cool thing about having this A assist right here is I don't need to thumb the A's. Like here's the A right here. This is what we call the A on the riser. I don't need to put my thumb here and hold the brake because that's a lot going on with the hand. Well, here comes my wife, yay! Will you film it? Normally without this setup right here, I'd have to keep my hand right here and, and manage the up and down of the, of the A assist. But I don't need to because I have the A assist in place that basically releases tension at the time that it would need to. Once it comes upright, this gets loose and it's no longer applying that pressure to the A-lines, which assists the glider up. All right, so I'm looking for the glider to be stable right overhead, and I'm not gonna need to do much. I'm gonna steer my with my feet a little bit to keep me under the glider, so if it's falling to the right, I'm gonna move my feet to steer the wheel to the right so I get back under it. And away we go. That's all there is to flying the trike. I did a little bit of a correction with my feet. One of the most important things is that the lines are clear, that you make sure that this glider up above is nice and clean like it is right now. Look at that, nothing wrong with it. Beautiful morning right now. It is so smooth. Being that we had a tailwind on takeoff, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in from the other way, into the headwind. You don't really wanna make any sort of questionable decisions where you might not be able to climb out, especially if you're in a tailwind. But if you have a headwind, your climb out's gonna be a better climb out. Your forward speed's gonna be slower, but your climb rate's gonna be the same. It's a simple math equation. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a turn here to lose some altitude so I can come in low across the field and then fly by Mrs. Vela. So this glider, as big as it is, man, it really does handle like, like I'm flying something, something more heavy, like a Cessna. Like it's nice and smooth, especially on mornings like this. Here we go, we'll go past the water. So much power. Right through the water, yes. <laughs> and a beautiful flyby. There's Mrs. Vela. And if I go to full power, up we go like a rocket. Falcon 9, everybody. The scariest thing to me as an instructor is like oscillations. Recently, there was a video where somebody like was just wildly out of control. I suppose he froze up, found himself in a situation where the, the paramotor in this trike was just swinging wildly, doing what would appear to be like acrobatic maneuvers. Now, acrobatics is not very common on trikes. Acrobatics is not very common on trikes. So when I saw the video, a lot of people were like, hey, he shouldn't be doing acrobatics while flying on a trike. 
and my immediate thought was that is not intentional. It appeared as though he was in full panic mode. As you're watching this on this YouTube video, you just see this perspective in front of you and you think, man, that looks so cool. But when you attempt to fly paramotors for the first time, so many people like unexpectedly get you know, blindsided by fear. Because even this right here, as, as easy viewing as it is for you on YouTube, it can seem pretty intimidating because you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so high up. What do I do? What do I do? I mean, seriously, I even felt like that. That said, with some practice, you get over that. But those initial flights can be really intimidating. I'm not doing much with these brakes. This glider is super stable, especially on a calm day. Like any glider is going to start moving around when it's not very calm. So I'm heading over here to where the air gets turned up a little bit more to show you kind of how the paramotor can move around a little bit. Um, it probably won't be too extreme today, but on a bumpy day, on a day that really people should not be flying, the paramotor can start going back and forth, back and forth, really, you know, uh, not violently, but it's definitely noticeable. And it's certainly intimidating to somebody who's new. So right here, I haven't been doing anything. The wind is kind of like rolling over these hills and the glider's starting to teeter-totter back and forth. But I'm still, I still haven't done anything with my hands. Now what, what happens is, let's say, let's say we get into a situation where I'm in a turn. Here I am, I'm turning, I'm turning, and I let go of that turn too fast. Now I'm not doing anything with my hands, but look at this. Rocking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now I can stop that. As an experienced paramotor pilot, I can stop that super easily just by going like this. One little pull and there. That right there, as I've just demonstrated, is perhaps the most intimidating thing for any beginner. For anybody who's just starting out, when they get into that swinging back and forth, they feel very out of control. If somebody can avoid that as much as possible by getting a glider that's appropriate for them starting out, rather than rushing to, man, I wanna fly something that flies like a fighter jet. You can eventually get to that, but you should calm your nerves first. You should be very, very acquainted with this perspective before you start double tapping on that fear by being so high up, so high up off the ground and swinging back and forth, back and forth. It would be better if you were really high up on a glider that's not rocking nearly as much so that you can just become familiar first with this wildly incredible perspective and then progress into something more advanced. This setup right here is really good, not because of the brand. I mean, it is a really good brand, Paramotor Fly Products. Uh, it is a beautiful setup. Like what you get is what you would have hoped for, I think. Like that's my, that's my experience with Fly Products. Um, but you don't have to have a Fly Products paramotor, right? Like you can absolutely get something that might be a little bit more affordable. Um, so long as it's stable on the ground. Um, and, and I think it's best if it has a little bit of weight to it. Like you don't have to have a big paramotor like this, a big trike. Gosh darn, it's a beautiful morning. You don't have to have a big trike like this, um, but it does contribute to that feeling of security because the weight suspended keeps you feeling more confident. Once again, I'm doing this flight because I have a passenger that I'm flying with tomorrow. I just wanted to make sure that everything checks out. And even though I'm flying the safest powered flying device imaginable, so long as you're in safe flying conditions. So I'm out here just making sure, okay, maybe to have fun just a little bit, but I do want to make sure that the engine's running as it should, the glider's behaving just the way it should. And uh, so far, so good. You tell me in the comments, do you like the idea of flying up high and seeing everything so far off in the distance? Or do you like being down low and kind of interacting with the terrain? That's what I'm about to do. I'm circling on down. The air feels good right here. It may get a little bit bumpier down low as I get closer to the rolling hills. But yeah, let me know what you think. As for me, 
I love being down close to the ground. I can see the wildlife. We have some beautiful birds that fly around. I think they're like osprey or something. Uh, and then we also have deer and javelina, those little wild pigs. Lots and lots of jackrabbits. When you start out flying, I wouldn't necessarily recommend flying down low. I'd recommend flying at what's considered to be like a really safe altitude, maybe like 500 feet. Just cruising, nice straight and level. And build up as many hours as you can just doing nothing but cruising. Learn to appreciate just the visuals of it before you start, you know, getting into the physics and and feeling a lot of the, the carving up that a paramotor can provide people with. Because if that goes wrong, and not that it necessarily goes really wrong, but it does amplify that intimidation factor. So just something like this, cruising along, soaking up the sights, will build confidence. That way, you can then move to something like this, where we're gonna go ahead and drop on down a little closer to the terrain and start to, to interact with the land just a little bit more. Now the reason you don't want to be you know, closer to the ground as a beginner is because you don't necessarily know how to respond to things when starting out. It's kind of like if you were to ride a dirt bike, you wouldn't want to go flying really fast down a trail because of the unexpected things. Without the experience, you're not going to know how to respond to those things. Like even if you, even if you squeak by and you like figure it out, that's, definitely the most irresponsible way to go about it by you know learning on the fly that's not very good and it, and it could put you into unnecessary harm I'm gonna do one last thing which is check the wind direction being that I don't have a wind sock out uh, what I can do is I can kind of go each direction in the cardinal direction northeast southwest and see where I'm getting the slowest direction I think it's gonna be to the west going that way because I know I was moving slower, but I don't really have a west landing option um, because I have the power lines right there. So it's a little bit harder to make a low and slow approach. So I'm gonna go this way, and then I'm gonna go this way. And maybe at this altitude, it's not, not too much different so I'm gonna do a 180 degree turn and if it's good then I'm going to commit to the landing yeah yeah we're gonna commit here we go avoiding this house right here I'm gonna go hands up on the brakes because I want the glider to get as much energy as it can and then I'm gonna flare right here nice and deep Nice. And I'm gonna taxi up to the truck. And I'm gonna face it and bury that brake to get it to fall back as much as it can that way. Perfect. Weasel my way out and to freedom. Okay, bear with me, don't leave the video just yet. I, I really want to emphasize something when getting started with trikes, what you can expect. What I notice when people are starting to learn how to fly these trikes is that um, taking off, like having control of this glider while on the ground uh, is going to be perhaps the hardest part to learn. When you power up, if that glider comes off to the side, if the trike is going straight this way and the glider comes up and then tips this way, it, it's immediately the instructor's gonna call kill, 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 because you need to have that glider up ahead. So, um, I find that when I'm flying tr this trike, that um, as the glider comes up, I'm immediately assessing if it's going right or if it's going left, which could, could also be, be, mind, be aware, but if it goes too far to one side, it can pull the trike over so that you, you have a little bit of a rollover. It's not like a huge deal. It happens. And that's also why I'm a big advocate for having a bigger, wider, wider standing paramotor. And that definitely contributes to rollover prevention. What you're looking for is the ability to control the trike to go straight with the glider overhead and then be able to take off nice and smooth, nice and smooth.
yeah, a glider like this, if you guys opt to get a larger glider, it is going to be easier because it's slower to come up. If you have a smaller glider, this propeller right here is going to blast it with air. And then the glider on the ground is going to wiggle, 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 kind of like come up quickly. And then you have to check it with the brakes, which is cupping the trailing edge of the glider so it doesn't want to overshoot you. And then it will frontal collapse, and then it could go into the propeller. That's a bad situation. So it's all about balance between the brake inputs, balance in the throttle control. It's about balance in your feet because you're steering with your feet. All right, guys. Peace.